Welcome to World Communion Sunday. And for those who might be tuning in late this afternoon on YouTube uh, or recording, welcome. I have several announcements here. Um, first, an invitation is extended to all to attend a congregational meeting following morning worship on Sunday, October the 17th. Two items will be discussed and hopefully we can come to some decisions regarding the resurfacing of the parking lot and laneways, and secondly, regarding the live streaming of our worship services. There are a couple alternatives for resurfacing, and one is to apply an anchor bit, and it's not asphalt. So if you're interested in what that might look like, uh, I believe Richie's Feeds and Needs have uh, some of that equipment on their uh, parking lot, on their area, uh, towards the, um, not right at the front, I think it's all asphalt at the front, but a little further back. And also, I think there's a lot in town behind some of the stores on closer to the post office that you might have a look at. Anyways, more information will be coming up prior to that uh, meeting on the 17th regarding that and live stream streaming. Just to let you know that Reverend Charles Deogracious will be our guest speaker for anniversary on Sunday, November the 7th. And some of you may already know that he has written a book called Born to Die from a Refugee to a Call to Serve. And if you would like a copy, please let me know so that we can tell Charles to possibly bring them with him and we'll hopefully have a signing time so that uh, you can get your copy personalized. More information on that as we get that organized. Let's Do Lunch is coming up. Uh, here, here we are already into October. October the 14th, and it'll be takeout as usual lately. So phone-in orders will be on Tuesday, not Monday, which is holiday Monday, Thanksgiving. Phone-in orders will be on Tuesday the 12th, here to the church. Um, we will also be decorating for Thanksgiving next Saturday. And if you have any vegetables or anything that you might like to contribute to that um, display, drop them off sometime through the week here at the church, and that would be most helpful. I have a special request that we keep uh, Karen McCarthy in your prayers this week. Thank you. Oh, 
seeking. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And reading from John chapter 6. Starting at verse 25. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and everyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. things I may tell you about before I start preaching. 
There's a guy called Peter Rukrif. Now Peter came to ministry in his 50s. He had what he called a sinful, fun-filled life. <laughs> I think we all had it, but before we got to 50, didn't we? He uh, became a really, really remarkable theologian in a very short time. And he wrote about the sacrament like this. He said, the sacrament is like a hose. It is a channel of the living water of God's grace. Our faith is like the opening of a faucet. We can open it a lot, a little, or not at all. And then there was a pretty famous Baptist preacher called Charles Spurgeon. And Charles, I spent a great deal of time with because I, uh, I admired his, uh, the way he put stuff together. He said, to know that Jesus loves me is one thing, but to be visited by him in love is more. And then Mother Teresa of Kolkata. In most rooms there is a switch that turns on the electrical light, but if there is no connection to the local power source, there is no light. The sacrament of communion is your connection to God. When it's there, there is enthusiastic, wholehearted service filled with love. So let's turn to some real <laughs> theology. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> This morning I'd like to think with you about the breaking of the bread. Where are its roots in scripture? How did Presbyterians in days long ago understand it? How they do the traditional things that we do help us? The breaking of the bread in scripture begins with the way people understood meals way back in the early days of Israel. Meals were heavily symbolic. The act of eating together represented commitment to each other. Food, it seemed to them, was always scarce. When you shared your family's food with someone, it was like saying, your life is very important to me. So much so that I am sharing my food with you. Food that is necessary for me to live my life. Eating together, sharing together, while making or renewing a covenant was a clear symbol. A symbol that promised promise had been made between each other. The symbolism went a step further. It talked about a relationship with God. Special meals reminded the community of God's promises to them as well as the community's promises to God. Our act of eating and drinking together on a sacred occasion helps us all notice God's presence. God is here. Our sacred meal brings the promises and power of past and future events into the present, into the Sunday morning, the 3rd of October, 2021. Think Israel again for me. The Passover meal, for instance, prompts the Jewish people to remember and relive the Exodus. And their words, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord our God brought us from there 
with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. The New Testament writers emphasize different qualities, and I need to oversimplify them. The New Testament stories of the Last Supper emphasize Jesus' promises to keep covenant with the church. John emphasizes Jesus' presence in John 6, I am the bread of life. For our brother Paul, participating in this meal anticipates Jesus' second coming. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Corinthians 11. Early church history tells us that communities of Christ use fish and bread. The feeding of the 4,000 and the 5,000 tells us Jesus took bread, blessed, broke, and gave it. Luke's church may also have used bread only. The breaking of the bread. It's true the cup is missing in some ancient manuscripts of Luke's story of the Lord's Supper. It's also true that no single text in either the Old Testament or New Testament expresses every dimension of the Jewish tradition or of the breaking of the bread as we think of it today. After the Bible was written, different denominations delivered different interpretations of our Lord's Supper. The Roman Catholic tradition says that the bread and cup become the body and the blood of Jesus. And that's transubstantiation. Lutherans teach constant formation. The bread and wine don't change. They do remain bread and wine. But they change in the same way that a metal poker does when it's left in the fire. It turns from cold and black to red and hot. The presence and some Christian communities don't observe communion at all. So we see we Presbyterians draw on the theology of John Calvin for our reformed and reforming roots. Calvin taught that God uses the bread and cup to assure us of his love. The bread and the cup remain the bread and the cup. But through our act of eating and drinking, Jesus Christ becomes present and communicates the divine promises that God has made to each of us. In formal language, if you will, the bread and cup are outward and visible signs of inward spiritual grace. John Knox, who was the founder of Scottish Presbyterianism, was, he had two theological gurus with him. They were the two wishers, both George, father and son. And they were a bit antsy about this being a sacrament originally, because sacrament comes from the Latin word sacramentum. To speak of sacrament, would emphasize our relationship and responsibility and would downplay God's part and in his initiative here this morning. So I wonder what the Knoxes and the Wishers would think of the sacrament during COVID. My favorite systematic prophet Crusty old Scott with a heart of pure gold taught. The breaking of the bread and cup confirm, proclaim, and seal God's promise to be gracious. And he always added, they are not the only means whereby God commits divine love to us. But, he said, but 
they announce, show, and ratify what is given to us here this morning by the grace of God. Many generations of dogmatic Presbyterians agree that Calvin's understanding of the love and the loaf and the cup makes sense. The cup is the cup, the bread is the bread. And God uses them to communicate with us in a hub. The same way that we will communicate again soon with a hub, with each other. Does that help, help you understand? Or your understanding of God? God from God makes a lot of sense to me. Grace is what we most deeply believe about God. Grace is what God is. Grace is not one attribute of God among others. Grace is God acting out of God's deepest meaning. I took a woman coming in a hospital one afternoon. She was not uh, affiliated with our Presbyterian Church. She said when she came to the communion table, she got a fool feeling. Sitting in her pew, she said, it's like God is beside me. Her denomination had begun to partake weekly quite a long time ago. And she had been dead set against it. Weekly was much too often, but it turned out to be reverse. She missed her meeting with God each week. Yeah, I started to take communion once a week in seminary. When asked how often communion should be served by a new session member at my first church, I freely admitted more than a little insensitively that worship without the breaking of bread was like taking a shower without turning on the water. Mm. Do I feel God in my heart every time the bread is broken? Mm. Sometimes I am broken. Sometimes I'm alienated from others. Sometimes I come to worship a dream. Perhaps even burn out. Sometimes I simply doubt. How do you feel as you come to the table today? I still remember a communion class taught in my teenage years by Dr. McNabb. Her faith, he said, is based on facts, not on feelings. By the fact he meant God's action on our behalf. Feelings come and go, don't they? Feelings can be deceptive as well as revealing. God acts for us in Jesus the Christ. At the table this morning, the bread and cup represents God's fact that he needs a relationship with each of us. So let's remember also as we come to the table this morning that it's not the only place that we encounter God. God is present in every circumstance of our life as well as in every breath that we take. The meal is simply a focal moment that helps us recognize God's presence 
in all times, in all places. On this Worldwide Communion Sunday, God is present here and in many, many millions of other sanctuaries across the world. The sacred meal, when our lives are positive and full, assures us that all our blessings are rooted in God. And where we are in the midst of a struggle, a struggle that COVID has brought to us, for instance, we can be sure that our living God is here for us, as He is all over the world. Come, come to God's table. reception of our gifts to God and our offerings. Let us sing it like solitude. God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
a reminder, a very brief reminder, that when I the best time to eat your bread and drink your wine and community is when I start to do there's a couple of preliminaries to that that may set you up even to do before that. So let's do it as a community together. As so the Lord Jesus, the same night he was on betrayed, that he was betrayed to bread and wine, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use. For this use, this holy mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and offer him our prayers of thanksgiving. Let us pray together. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King. Almighty and eternal God, for the majesty of your glory, the wonder of your works, and the riches of your grace. Therefore, with your people of all places and times, and with the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your greatness and sing your praise in the angel song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God, we bless you for his holy birth, his perfect life on earth, his suffering for us, his triumph over death, for his ascension to your right hand and his gift of the Holy Spirit, and for the promise of his coming again. Remembering his work and passion and pleading his eternal sacrifice. We follow his example and obey his command. Who on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks to God he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this when you remember me. In the same way he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Send down your Holy Spirit to bless us and these your gifts of bread and wine. For the bread which we break may be for us the communion of the body of Christ and the cup of blessing which we bless, the communion of the blood of Christ, and that we receiving them by faith may be made partakers of his body and blood with all his benefits, to nourish us, to help us grow in his grace, for the glory of your most holy name. And here we offer and present to you our very selves to be a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for your acceptance through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Remember, Lord, your holy church throughout the world and this worldwide communion Sunday. Reveal your glory among the nations. Save your people and bless those who belong to you. Shepherd them. Carry them on your shoulders forever. Remember, Lord, our families and friends. Surround them with your steadfast love. Remember those, Lord, who are sick in our community. Those who suffer pain, loneliness, or grief. Those who draw near to death and those whom we name before you in our hearts.
Comfort them with your presence. Sustain them by your promises. Grant them your peace. And our rejoicing in the communion of the saints, we remember with thanksgiving all of your faithful servants and those that are dear to us who now serve you in the glory of heaven. Keep us in unbroken fellowship with your whole church in heaven and on earth. And bring us at the last to the joy of your eternal kingdom. We pray in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we who forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. According to the Holy Institution, example and command of the Lord Jesus, and as a memorial to him we do this. When the night he was betrayed to bread, he broke it and said, This is my body, broken for each of you. Do this when you remember me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper and said, This is a new covenant between God and each of you. It's given for the forgiveness of your sins. Think it, remembering me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. The final prayer. Grace God, we give you glory, thanks, and praise. For the dying and undying love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In your great goodness, you have brought us into communion with Him and with all who love Him and made us heirs of your everlasting kingdom. By your grace, may we continue in this holy fellowship and to live to the glory of your name through. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ communion bread.
the Holy Spirit fill your hearts and your minds this day and all. Oh.